There is stuck and there is stuck like me when I doubt I ever can move on in my door. Today we're going to be talking about lyrics. I can't tell you how many emails I get from lyricists all over the world saying, I only write lyrics. What do you mean you only write lyrics? The reality is, if it wasn't for the lyricists, we wouldn't need any singers, and all these acts could be replaced by a trombone and some dancers. So, I don't only write lyrics, I write lyrics! I write lyrics! Say it over and over and over again till you feel as important as you really are to the songwriting process and the record business, okay? Okay, now let's talk about how to write a lyric that works in the marketplace. Notice I said in the marketplace. A good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it answers the five W's, who, where, what, when, why, plus how. Just like any story in a magazine, on a newspaper, in a newspaper, or on TV. No different. However, a song lyric and the story for a song lyric needs to be really emotional. On a scale of one to ten, most of us live nice little lives around six. Nothing terrible happens, nothing wonderful happens. It's just a solid six. But when we watch TV, go to the movies, play video games, read books, and listen to music, we as the audience want to be transported to a peak emotional experience. And back to that scale of one to 10, on that scale, it's plus or minus 15. The best thing that ever happened and the worst thing that ever happened. So don't hide behind your feelings when you're writing a lyric. Spill all the blood on the page. Let it all come out of you. You're writing a draft first. You're not writing a finished lyric. So just let it all come out. Scribble everything down. Any idea that ever comes to you, scribble it down. And by the way, I don't trust technology to save my ideas because it doesn't take much for the technology to eat my stuff. So I keep everything in a plain, ordinary, eight and a half by 11 bound notebook. I scribble everything down, any phone call, any idea, and I also keep all my ideas for titles in a separate section. That way I always carry the notebook with me and nobody at Google can take it away. All right. So here we have an emotional story, a passionate story, and one that everybody in the world can relate to. So if your uncle had one left foot, like we all do, but only one left foot, and he died, and you remember him as a guy who made bacon, perfect bacon every morning, and ate it with three slices of whole wheat toast, rye toast, and raisin bread that was buttered on both sides. And he always sang Ave Maria as he was taking a shower. And the gentleman died, and you want to write a song about him, that's fine. The chances are good that you're the only person who's going to relate to that story because not too many of us know poor Uncle Norman. But you can use the passion of missing him and pour that into a story. Most people don't know poor Uncle Norman, so it's a good idea to, to write more broadly. So there's a you, and we all substitute our own you, and there's a me, and we're always the me. We experience this story firsthand. It's not, he was a guy who did this and this. It's you were a guy who did this and this. And I loved you, not she loved him, because that makes it more distant. So the more personal you can make the story, the better. It's a personal experience. 
Okay, so write love songs. I love you, I hate you, I miss you, I miss you, I shouldn't miss you, I miss you on Tuesdays between three and five. Whatever it is, you are writing a very personal, emotional, and passionate story about something. Now, stories don't come out whole. Stories come out an idea and a smidge at a time. So I would suggest that you write the story of your song first. The beginning, the middle, the end. And write it in prose, not, don't rhyme it. The beginning, middle, end, and then who, where, what, when, why, plus how. Answer those questions. And I'm going to tell you two stories, and I want you to hear the difference. First story. The boy had a dog. The dog ran away. The boy was sad. The boy had a dog. The dog ran away. The boy was sad. The boy had a dog. The dog ran away. The boy was sad. End of story. That's story number one. Here's story number two. The boy had a dog. The dog ran away. The boy was terrified. He called the pound, he called the police, he hung signs on every tree and telephone pole in the neighborhood. He rode up and down, up and down, up and down every street in the neighborhood, calling the dog's name. He did this day after day after day after week after week. Finally, he flung himself on his bed, sobbing, knowing he would never see his pet again. Fell asleep, crying, and woke up with the dog licking his face. That's the kind of story to write. I'm not suggesting you write about dogs that ran away or boys that have dogs or police trying to help a kid find his dog. But I'm talking about all the adventures that happen, all the events that happen in the course of that story. Make it a really good story. It also has a, a great emotional depth. Here's this poor little kid missing his dog. And it shows everything that he tries to get the dog back. That is a great story. I'm not tooting my own horn saying, wow, I'm a great storyteller. But I've taught myself to be one to make my stories really interesting. So as an assignment, I'd like to suggest you write five stories. Don't write anything that you've ever heard before. Tell me something new. Tell me something new. You have a fingerprint as a person. You also have one as a writer. Write your fingerprint. We already have Bob Dylan. We already have the Bergmans. We already have Jay-Z. Write who you are and write five stories just quickly in five minutes. See if you can scribble something down and you'll surprise yourself. Will you try that for me? Okay, so now you've got some stories. I want you to put them away for three days and then take them out again and look at them coolly and objectively. What have I got here? The chances are some of those stories will be good stories. But most important, I want them to be your stories. When we write, we constantly ask ourselves, have I heard this before? If so, could I make it a little different? And if not, could I write something else? We as professional songwriters have to ask ourselves those questions all day, every day, while we are writing. It's very easy to rewrite something while you're writing it, and it's almost impossible to rewrite it after you've finished it. So be a good editor. There's a very fine line between being a, a ridiculously stern critic and a good editor. But you can do it. The more you do it, the easier it gets. So have I heard this before? If so, could I make it a little different? And if not, could I write something else? Then you want to be sure that your lyric sounds conversational. Would I say this if I were talking to a friend on the phone? And if not, how would I say it? Conversational English is real easy. And 
and very forgiving. It's not about grammar. It's not about spelling. It's not about punctuation. It's about just saying, hey, what's going on? Oh, I don't know. Uh, we had a fire. Yeah, I was evacuated. Yeah, the Red Cross took good good care of me. And guess who was in the cot next to me? The guy I married. That's a good story, right? You haven't heard that before. I'm not saying to write a story about being evacuated and ending up at the Red Cross shelter, but it's a good way to practice writing outside the ordinary. God save me from ordinary. It's a dogfight out there. Nobody's beating down the door or breaking down walls to try to find cliches. Your job is to be the artist that you are, not what you think somebody wants you to be, but to be original. When you're original, your light will shine and you will break out of the crowd and have a career. Let's talk about titles. Suppose a person at a record company has a thousand MP3s in his or her inbox and an equal number of CDs on his or her desk. And 999 of the CDs are called I Love You. And one of them is called Kissing a Kangaroo. Now, which of the thousand CDs do you suppose he or she would listen to first? If it were my desk, I'd listen to Kissing the Kangaroo. Same with the MP3s. You cannot recycle other people's work and say what they've already said and slap your name on it. That's just, it's not who you are. It's not what the industry wants. Everybody's looking for something new. So the title is the, is the way you introduce yourself to somebody, whether it's a co-writer, whether it's a publisher, or a producer, or a record company, and a guy who promotes material. First thing is the title. I have a book that I've kept for years, and all that's in that book are titles. And people I've written with over the years are kind of laughing at me. Here comes Molly with her title book again. But I keep adding to it. And every time I get an idea, a new idea, I scribble it down and I refine it. Sometimes the people I've written with have said, well, that's a good line for a song, but not a good title. So you got to keep pushing the envelope and find things to say that are new things to say. Also, it's a good idea to keep your titles short. These days, there are lots of songs with titles that are just one word. So much that's better than than it's ever been. And when I started writing, I had titles this long. You couldn't even get them on the record. So less is more always, but titles are the key, the first step to writing a great song. Once you have a title, also think about if you have a picture in the title, that's stronger than just feelings because we can hear the words and we can see the picture. you got a kangaroo giving somebody a kiss or somebody kissing a kangaroo. I don't know where the story's going to go, but I'd sure be interested to find out and I can see the kangaroo. Maybe it's a blue kangaroo. It doesn't have to be brown like they really are. When you're using your imagination, anything is possible. There is nothing you can't do with your imagination. So title, title, title. And once you have a title, I suggest you do what I suggest in my books, How to Write a Hit Song, 5th Edition, and How to Be a Hit Songwriter. There are chapters in both of my books on using your title and the seven steps that I apply to writing lyrics from a title. The first three involve writing your lyric 
to a melody. And I'll leave those out for now. But the first thing, write the title at the top of a blank sheet of paper. And I mean a real sheet of paper in a notebook, not necessarily on a computer. As you can tell, I'm not very tech savvy. I need three 800 numbers and the Red Cross to get me to turn the thing on in the morning. Oh, and I expect a Nobel Prize for that, or at least a nomination. So you got your title. You want to scribble down every idea that you have that flies into your head on the subject of that title. Here's a kangaroo. I'm kissing a kangaroo. Am I in Australia? No, it was walking down State Street in Santa Barbara eating a popsicle. And what flavor was the popsicle? I would have to say it's probably cherry flavored. It look It's cherry flavored, but it's orange. Well, how can a popsicle be orange and cherry flavored? Well, in your imagination, anything is possible. Was the kangaroo wearing shoes? Oh yeah, he was wearing Crocs. Well, actually he had a Croc on one foot and, an, and a New Balance uh, purple sneaker on the other. And okay, so he's walking down the street, he's eating his popsicle, and my God, he goes into Starbucks. Well, Starbucks doesn't have coffee. They're selling tuna sandwiches. Okay, tuna sandwiches that taste like filet mignon. What do you know? And we go on and on and on from there. We're in the imagination. You're scribbling everything down. So what does this, the kangaroo who's walking down State Street with a popsicle and two different shoes who goes into Starbucks, what does he want? He is lonely. He is looking for a girl. Now, does he want to meet another kangaroo? Does he, does he prefer a nice mockingbird? Perhaps a puppy? Who knows? In your imagination, anything is possible. So from his pouch, the kangaroo takes a harmonica and starts playing it, but it sounds like a violin. Well, what's the song about that he's playing? I miss my baby and it's raining. Well, we can't have that in this song because that's a cliche and everything else about the song or the story in the song is original. So he's playing the harmonica and a little goat walks up to him and says, boy, I've been waiting my whole lifetime to hear that music. And they sit down on a bench on State Street. The bench is green, but as soon as they sit on it, it's got polka dots all over it. And they're sitting on the bench, and as soon as they sit down, it starts to move. And it's like an airplane that's flying. It's like a drone that's flying all over the place. And they're very happy together. They have instant chemistry. And in the very last shot, the little goat gives the kangaroo a kiss. So that's a crazy story. It's fun to play with. But I'll just scribble down all those ideas, all your ideas for your titles, for your story, and don't censor them as to whether they're any good or not. Don't say, oh, that's dumb. You know what? If you read the newspaper now and listen to the news on TV, if you had written that as a story, if you'd written any of those stories as a story, <clears throat> people have said, this is preposterous. Get out of my office. But these days you can write anything and it's all, it's all having a life of its own. There are songs in movies, there are songs in TV shows, there are songs in video games, there are songs in commercials, and there are songs on the radio, when by the radio I mean all media. And they're all about different things, but basically the theme is love song, and I just made my kangaroo story a love song. You have a melody, you have words, you have a song. Congratulations. Now, just because you have a song doesn't mean it's a great song. It means that you've made a start at it. And if there are things that you're not crazy about in the melody, you might suggest to Billy, hey, could we change this a little bit? and maybe make the walk up half as long so we get to the chorus quicker and oh no, 
Oh, no, this came to me from the ether. This came to me while I was sleeping. I was in church and this line came to me. It's not going to change. Well, okay, those are signs that you and Billy are not meant to be as longtime collaborators. It's important before starting any business venture to have it very clearly spelled out who gets what. And you need to have a piece of paper between you and any potential collaborator with both of your signatures explaining and spelling out very clearly who gets what. And if it doesn't work out, there's that reversion clause where you each get your part of it and go on your merry way. All right? Don't say, oh, it's my mother. I don't need a piece of paper. Trust me, you need a piece of paper. Well, it's my husband. Even more so, you need a piece of paper. Always have a signed agreement. And if you don't, you're looking for trouble. You're now in the business part of the music business. And signatures mean something. Okay, you're creating a product. The product is in a marketplace. This is commerce. You need to have a piece of paper. Okay, so let's say Billy doesn't work out. You keep looking. They want to see examples of what you've written. And what do you know? You have the portion of the lyric that you did write where the lines are all different lengths and the rhythm changes in the words. So now you have some what I call market-ready lyrics that are ready to suggest rhythm and the rhythm can suggest a new melody. So even though it didn't work out with Billy, at least you had a good learning experience and have something more sophisticated and more professional to show the next person. <clears throat> Everything works out in the end. I have some learning tools that are fantastic and that I'm happy to offer you. The first is my book called How to Be a Hit Songwriter. It covers everything we've discussed this morning, as well as lots of other things, the secrets of hit songwriting. And then I have another book, How to Write a Hit Song, which is in its fifth edition and is also fantastic. And to go with them, I produce Molly Ann Lakin's Master Class in Songwriting, which is a compilation of all the very best classes that I taught at UCLA. And with the books, this comprises a complete home study hit songwriting course. Thank you again. Write well, see on the charts, and be sure to let me know if I can help you with your songs in terms of a consultation for marketing and evaluation. You can reach me at my website, songmd at songmd.com, but please don't send me any unsolicited material because it'll be automatically deleted. Those of you in North America, that's Canada, U.S., and Mexico, you can call my 800 number, 800-851-6588, and try to reach me between 8.30 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time, okay? You know you're good. You know you've got something special. You have a gift that you want to share with the world. I'm with you. I'm here for you. When you're ready to move forward and make your dreams come true, here I am. Try